Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. <laughs> Mama Yum used to say, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. It's another Wednesday evening, and I'm glad about it. Welcome. Glad you're here to be with us tonight. This is Pastor Sam May of the Living Bible Church of the Coma, Washington, in the 253. And we're so glad that God arranged this time so that you and I could meet tonight and talk about his word, talk from his word, and receive encouragement in his word tonight. He brought us through this day, whatever this day was like, he brought us through. He kept us and he watched over us. And for that, we give him thanks. For that, we can praise his name. For that, we can lift him up. For that, we can tell him thank you. As a matter of fact, you ought to right now uh, if you're listening on this broadcast tonight, you ought to just put in that, that comment line. Thank you, Jesus. Another day's journey. Thank you, Lord. You kept me. You could just put some clapping hands in there. You can give a, a clapping hand of praise because he's been so good and he is so awesome and so kind. He's a loving God and we can't thank him enough. Every breath we breathe is a breath that he's given us and we can tell him thank you. So, we thank him for just his mercy and his kindness. Uh, he's with us through it all. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and he kept his word. And so we can thank him because he's a word-keeping God. He, he has no limits. He, uh, he has no inadequacies. He's all that we need when we need him. So we, we bless his name, and we praise his name tonight. Would you go with me? in a word of prayer before our awesome and mighty God. God, we bless you tonight. We praise you. We thank you. We lift you up. You are so awesome and mighty. You are great and greatly to be praised. And we acknowledge tonight that uh, it's because of you, God, that we live, move, and have our being. We acknowledge tonight, God, that you are the one who keeps us, who watches over us, who provides for us and protects us. We acknowledge it tonight we are not uh, we are not besides ourselves to think that we're doing all these things but you are the one doing all the things in our life and God we say thank you tonight God we thank you for Jesus tonight we ask you to help you ask you to help us tonight as we go into this study tonight God let your word have free reign in our lives tonight to your glory in Jesus name we pray amen well, amen, we bless him because uh, he's kept us and been kind to us and watched over us. And, uh, hey, you know, through it all, we, we've got sane minds. You know what? You could bless God for a sane mind tonight, a sane mind. Uh, uh, there's stuff going on, and, and, and your mind is stable. You can bless God for that. But I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't want to preach to you about your mind tonight. I got some other stuff I want to talk to you tonight. But just be glad you got a sane mind tonight. I'll just say that, that to you. Don't walk around talking about you about to lose your mind or you lost your mind. If you lost your mind, you better go find it. Uh, don't be losing your mind. That's, that's not a good attitude. That's not a good temperament to have. Bless God because you still have a sane mind tonight. Hey, listen. We, we got to go into the study. I got some stuff I want to share with you tonight from God's word. Um, we want to talk about uh, tonight from 1 John. We're still in 1 John. We're working our way through the book 1 John. We want to talk to you tonight about recognizing the truth from the lie. Recognizing the truth from the, recognizing the truth from the lie. It's important you're able to do that. And, and uh, if you would, if you would, uh, we're going to give you this main point, then we're going to go into it. Uh, uh, the believer must be aware of false teachers who present themselves as knowing the truth. They present themselves as, as knowing the truth. We're looking at first John chapter two, verses 18 through 24 tonight. And if I could, uh, some of you might remember, um, lost in space. Y'all remember, uh, lost in 
space, the Robinson family and Dr. Smith, <laughs> you know, there was a, 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 a robot, if you would, that was with them on that journey. They had got lost out there in space on the planet and <clears throat> the robot's responsibility was to help them out. And every time something wrong was about to happen, the ro robot would say, danger, danger, danger. Off time he would tell uh, Will Robinson, danger, this is coming, that is coming. He wanted to warn them so that they could be aware of what was coming uh, towards them and be prepared for it so they could know how to handle it. And you remember there was, uh, I think his name was Dr. Smith. He was always messing stuff up. Well, Dr. Smith was a very self-centered person. He always was trying to figure out something that's going to help him out. But the idea was that the robot warn the people when something was about to happen, warn the people when something was up inside. So I want to kind of take that approach tonight that in our text, John, if you would, is warning us. He was warning the believers he was writing to at that time. And he was warning us. He's warning us, if you would, tonight about those who present themselves uh, as being something that's really alive, what they're presenting is alive, but oftentimes they will listen to it, listen to this. They will, they will tell the lie in a persuasive way, persuasive way. You see, that's what lies are about. You know, people don't tell lies if they don't think they can be persuasive. They think they can get away with it. They think they can get something over. So this is about uh, people lying. Uh, but this is about in the spiritual world, this is people lying to deceive people, especially the people of God. So let's go into this tonight. And I want to read the first two verses there and just give you a, a brief couple of comments there. Uh, verses um, 18 and 19, he says, your little children. Now, this now is his his term of endearment for those who he's writing to. He says, it's the last hour. Uh, basically, the, the last hour was uh, the period of history that we're living in now. It, it'll be here until Christ Christ returned. You, you know, uh, when the disciples wrote, when those who wrote the New Testament, they often, uh, even when they preached the gospel of Christ, they preached it with an urgency. They they didn't know when Christ was coming back. They were aware that Christ might come back at any time. So they there was an urgency to their preaching. And so they, they remember Jesus said, you don't know when I'm coming back, but be ready. So, uh, this term of the last hour, he, in him, for him, that time was the last hour for us. This is the last hour. And this is not putting a, a time 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, but all this time until Jesus comes back is the last hour. We don't know when he's coming back. So he's, he's writing to them. He says, uh, this is last hour. And if you've heard the antichrist is coming, even now, I mean, the Antichrist have come by which we know that it is the last hour. Um, he makes a couple of things here that I, I want to just um, talk about. I didn't give you a necessary header for this one. Let me just talk about this, this Antichrist thing just for a few minutes here. He talks about the Antichrist and he talks about many Antichrists has come. He said the Antichrist and in my version of the Bible is uh, it's uh, capitalized. He's talking about. Uh, the wicked one who's going to come uh, in the future. And uh, perhaps you, if you get a chance, uh, you can go over and read Revelation uh, chapter 13 and you can see how the Antichrist sometimes described as the beast is going to come and deceive people, the world and uh, get worship and everything. Antichrist, that's the Antichrist. But he says many uh, have come, uh, not the Antichrist, but others have come antichrist have came uh this idea of antichrist here there's a note there if you got your notes is uh opposer of christ or one who usurps the place of christ oppose christ or uh, usurp the place of christ or if you would try to take his place in this in this instance what he john is telling us here is he's talking about the the false teachers he's saying there there's going to come a, a, a false teacher later on and he's going to sway the world towards him but until that time there's many antichrists who have come and they're still here today they're still happening today who are trying to take the place of christ they're false teachers they're setting themselves up 
uh, as, uh, as as the Christ, as, as, as the Messiah, whatever they're doing, that we've seen that in our society here in America, where there are those who have set themselves up as Christ. They've called themselves the Christ. They've called themselves as, you know, the one who is to come. But they are the those who are trying to take his place. And it's interesting because Peter tells us in 2 Peter 2 and 1, he says that there were false prophets uh, among the people, even there will be false teachers among you. There are false teachers. There's f- Satan has false teachers whose purpose is to push his agenda, to push his agenda. We'll get into this in a little bit uh, about the lies that they're, they're tell- telling that, that, that John's going to help us here. Because remember, he was dealing with some people called Gnostics, 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 I'm sorry, who claimed to have a special knowledge. So they set themselves up, but they were... They were false teachers, okay? So, uh, after he says that there, there are many antichrists to come, but then he says they went out from us in verse 19, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they that they might be made manifest that none of them were uh, or, or of us. And it's almost like he's saying that at one time they dwelt among us, but at a point they left. And the reason they left was because it was it was manifested. God moved them out. Whatever God did to move them out to manifest the fact that they were not of us in the first place. Because if they were really of us, they would have stayed with us. Uh, the, these false teachers, perhaps in John's time, couldn't get a, a, a foothold in, in the church. And so they left. They, they were false teachers. These are not saved folk. These are people who were there, but they were there for con, contrary purposes, I guess I could call it. And so he said they left. They went out. And the reason they went out was so that we could understand they were not of us because if they had been of us, they would have stayed with us. Okay? So let, let's move on a little bit farther here. Let's move on a little bit farther here. Verses 20 and 21 of First John uh, chapter 2. But you have uh, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Now, remember, he's talking about false teachers here, okay? And he says here, you have an anointing, the Holy One. Who is the Holy One? The anointing, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The believer has illumination of the truth through the Holy Spirit. He's talking about those who were false prophets. They were false teachers, false. We'll see, we'll see this just a little bit more in a minute. They were false. But he says, you know the truth and you know that the lie is not of the truth. The Holy Spirit is important for us to get this because those he's saying those false prophets, those false teachers were not operating under the Holy Spirit. L- listen to the importance of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the importance of the Holy Spirit. John 14, uh, 15 and 17. I'll just give you a couple here. Uh, he says in John 14, 15 to 17, if you let me keep my commandments, this is Jesus talking here, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that that may abide with you. That phrase, another helper, means one like me, another one like me. That would be the Holy Spirit. He will, he will pray the Father that the Father will give them another helper like him. Paraclete, one called alongside. Why did they were going to need the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus couldn't be here all the time. Jesus' ministry was three and a half years. And so after three and a half years, Jesus knew he was going to have to go to the cross, die for our sin, get up from the grave, and go back to be with the Father. So they, the work that he started needed to be carried on, and he knew they couldn't carry that work on but, uh, you know, by themselves. So he said, I'm going to pray the Father, and the Father will send you another helper, comforter, Apparently, one who will come alongside, one who will be with you, another helper that may abide, he may abide with you. Listen to this forever. Listen to what verse 17 says. Verse 17 says, the spirit of of truth, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Why? Because he's a spirit. He's a spirit. He's a spirit who would come, if you would, and indwell the believers. The world 
the system will not receive him nor see him because he's spirit. But Jesus says, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. That's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You have, when you are saved, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to be with you and in you. Paul said over in first Corinthians chapter six, um, Around verse 19, I believe, don't, don't, I, I, I got the right, I, I got the right block. I might be a couple of houses, house numbers off. He said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit who is in you? He comes to take up residence in you. He is, he is that, that, that holy nature that, that God who, who comes to be in us and, and with us to empower us. And because he's spirit, the, the main thing here I want to come back to also is that when Jesus was here, because he was in a body, he could only be in one place at a time. He knew things. He knew stuff that was happening in other places. But if he located himself to a body. He could only be in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit, because he's spirit, y'all heard me say this before, that he, listen, he's here with me where I am on this broadcast but if you're saved, he, he's also there with you where you are watching this broadcast. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the one. He is the anointing. He is the one who has to put the anointing on our lives. Listen, uh, John 16 and 13. I want you to catch this also. John 16 and 13 says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, listen, he's called the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will th tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He is uh, John uh, uh, two, first John 2 and 20 says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. Listen, every, every believer, listen, to this, every believer has an anointing from the Holy One. OK, in the Old Testament, it was it was it was uh, pictured as uh, the spirit coming upon someone or they anointed someone. But listen, every believer, New Testament believer, believer in Jesus Christ, you have the the anointing, the spirit coming and being with you. This is not the anointing is not just for the pastor, the preacher, the Sunday school teacher, every child of God. Now, listen, you got to submit to the anointing through the power of the spirit. But he is listening to this he is there to help you when G, let me back up when jesus said uh back in john 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments and then he says in 16 and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever listen to this jesus said if you let me keep my commandments but jesus even knew that we couldn't keep his commandments on our own we are in insufficient to keep his commandments on our own. So what did he do? He prayed for the spirit. He prayed the father that the father would send the comforter, the comforter, the, the, the helper came uh, uh, over in Acts 2. When he came, he came to empower the believer. He lives in you. He, he lives in me. And he, listen to this, he is what Jesus calls the spirit of truth. He only speaks truth. OK, and what he does for us as he, if you would, he illum illuminates the truth to us. Now, this is not about revel illumination, not revelation, illumination. OK, and uh, listen, and I often say this times, I often say this uh, at times in our churches. I say I speak to your your ears. The Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. I, I speak to your ears. But the Holy Spirit uh, speak to you, speaks to your heart. The Holy Spirit brings you better understanding than I could ever try to do on my own because I'm trying to teach you spiritual things. Uh, teachers of the word, preachers of the word, trying to teach you the spiritual things of God. But it's the Holy Spirit who illuminates those things. The Holy Spirit, and he's the spirit of truth. You ever... Um, you ever had a light bulb moment in church? I, you know, you know what they say the light bulb. Comes. You ever have a light bulb moment in church? You, uh, a preacher was teaching, a uh, preaching something or teaching something, and all of a sudden, some clicked in your head, and you you got it. That was the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit. He he is the one who brings illumination to the truth of God's word. He is the one who helps us 
understand God's word. We, we as teachers of the word, we can bring it to you. We can show it to you. Uh, we, we, can, we can do all those things uh, to you to try to help you. But it's the Holy Spirit of God that takes you deeper and gives you greater under, understanding of the word of God. He is your anointing. He is the one who brings, if you would, truth to light. He's he's the he's the light bulb. He's the light bulb spirit. I come to the light bulb spirit. He's the Holy Spirit, but he illuminates. And you 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 sat in, and 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 sometimes you sat in church and and, and preachers talking about something. You say he's talking about me. No, he don't know know what's going on in your life. But you know who knows? The Holy Spirit knows. The Holy Spirit knows and the Holy Spirit can give you understanding and the preacher don't always know. The preacher prepares the word to bring the word forth. The teacher prepares the word to bring the word forth. But the preacher or teacher can't guarantee uh, who that who needs that word. Sometimes they know, but many times in in the teaching time, the preaching time, there's something said that you have that light bulb, that light bulb experience. That man, that listen to this, that light bulb comes on. And you'd be like, wow, that's the Holy Spirit. And we all have, we all have, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. But see, this is the key. We've got to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. He's the he, he he brings us illumination. He helps our under understanding. That's what he does. So he says here that uh, he says and back at verse uh, 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 back up at verse John here, verse first John two twenty twenty one. He says, uh, "You know all things. What things? All things do you know? You know the truth. What well, all things? You, the things that you need to know. You know the truth." OK, and because you know it, you know that no lie is of the of the truth. Now, remember, these were false teachers. These were false teachers. OK, let me uh, let me go a little bit further, further and see if we can open this a little a little bit more. OK, You'll, did you get your light bulb moment there? OK, listen, back at first John chapter two. Uh, back at first John chapter two, and this, this is the one that, uh, help us. Here's the warning. Here, here's the one that we need to catch. Here's the one we need to become more aware of. Pray the Holy Spirit would bring the light bulb moment. Somebody needs this light bulb moment tonight, uh, to carry forth. He says in verse 22, now remember he just got through saying, he just got through saying that, you know, the truth. And no lie is of the truth. So here now he's going to begin dealing with, if you would, the false teachers. He says in verse 22, who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the father and the son. Now, remember we told you uh, that word Antichrist had to do with uh, uh, uh coming against or in the place of, you know, to usurp Christ, to come in their place. Notice how he says he operates. He says the Antichrist is a liar. He says the Antichrist denies that Jesus is the Christ. Not only does he deny that Jesus is the, is the Christ, he denies the Father and the Son. Man, this is so important to catch this. This is so important that you understand this. Um, listen, those who deny that Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Messiah, and that the Messiah is come in the flesh are liars. A couple of things that I want you to catch here is, uh, again, in the false teaching, they were saying that Jesus couldn't have been the Messiah. He couldn't have been God because God will never have anything to do with flesh because all flesh is evil. I think I told you that before. Okay, so now they bring this back. Okay, Jesus couldn't have been the Christ because, because he came in, because he came in the flesh. That's really the lie here. That's really the lie here that they were 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 using that they were holding up that they were uh he was not the messiah because the messiah would never come in the flesh okay those who deny that jesus is the messiah 
the chosen one of God and that the Messiah, the chosen one is God, uh, is come in the flesh is a liar. Now, let me let me uh, let me take this a little bit further here and come back over in first John four and three. First John four and three. We're going over and coming back. OK, over and coming back. OK. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Here it is. So now this is, this is, this is a, uh, he, he says every spirit, spirit of who? Spirit of the Antichrist from what we just got through talking about. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Every, the Antichrist, the Antichrist denies that Jesus is the Christ. The Antichrist denies that Jesus is the Christ. And John says here in 4 and 3, 1 John, that spirit uh, does not uh, confess that uh, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. It's not of God. It's, 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 it's an it's a, it's a evil spirit. It's a, it's, a li it's a lying spirit. Now, let me tell you where the lying spirit comes from. The lying spirit, that's about the devil. Because remember, the devil wanted to take over anyway. He wanted to take over heaven, got kicked out. He came down here on earth and to take over earth. And, you know, he now he's, 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 his, he, his whole uh, system is about deception. His whole deception, this his whole uh, system is about lying, if you will. We looked at it a little bit last week. I think it was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. All those things are opposed to God's system, and they are system, his system is made up of lies. Jesus said the devil is the father of lies. He's the father of lies. So if you're talking about the Antichrist here, the liar here, you're talking about the devil, the spirit. He says, he says here in, in 1 John 4 and 3, every spirit, every spirit. Remember, we saw earlier right here in this passage where he talked about many Antichrists have come. Spirit, every spirit, every, every spirit, many of them, many of them. And the lie, listen to this, they, the lie they are, are putting up is that Jesus is not the Christ. Man, the false teachers peddle lies about who Jesus is, that Jesus is not the Christ. And I, and, I, and I must admit to you, I must admit to you that as I, I um, well, I guess I better read this other one first here. Um, did I read the whole thing there? I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, and every spirit, First John 4 and 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit. Here it is. Here it is. I didn't read the whole thing. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, not the Antichrist with the big A. He ain't came yet. But this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which we have told you was coming and is now already in the world. What's already in the world? The spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not here yet. The the uh, from the revelation antichrist, but the spirit of the antichrist is, is already here. Uh, this spirit already dwells. There's people who are already saying that Jesus is not the Christ. He is not the Messiah. They're, what they're saying is he's not the Christ, the son of the living God. They're saying that he was not God in the flesh. He could not be a hundred percent God and hundred percent man in the flesh. That's, that's the spirit of the antichrist to, to discredit him. There are a lot. If you just stop and start listening, there are a lot of, of, of religions. There are a lot of sex S E C T S that down, downgrade, downgrade Jesus Christ downgrade they say well he wasn't he wasn't god in the flesh he was a prophet okay he was a prophet of god but he was not god in flesh he was in the flesh he was not the messiah he was not the son of god they why because they're trying to they downgrade him and they bring him down to the levels of other prophets that they believe in it's what they're doing so so they're they're taking away from if you would his his deity, they're taken away from uh, who he really is. And John says here that that's a lie. That's a lie. Listen, let me read one more because I'm, I'm, I'm just this thing here. Second John, I'm sorry. Yeah, second John, little John, second John 7. Second John 7. If you go over to your right, you'll find second John. And verse seven, it says, for many believers have gone to the world 
going out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Man, he keeps bringing this thing back, this antichrist thing, okay? We're talking about the antichrist. We're, what we're doing is we're, we're really running, we, most many times we talk about the antichrist, we're running to uh, Revelation to see the work and how he's going to work. But he says this spirit is already in the world. He says there are many, listen, he says there are many deceivers. Deceivers are liars. Why do people practice deception? It's a lie because they want to be convincing. When people deceive somebody, they convince them. And here, people are being convinced of the wrong thing. People are being convinced that Christ is not the son of the living God. He is not the Messiah. He is not the one sent uh, for the sins of the world. They've got other people who they say, I, I told, I tell this story often that uh, there are those who say there are all kinds of ways to get to God. Well, it depends on what God you're talking about. Are you talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Are you talking about the God of scripture? Or are you talking about some other God? Because according to what I read in scripture, there's only one way to get, to get to God. There's only one way to get to God. There's only one way to get to God, and that's by Jesus Christ. Jesus said that himself in John 14 and 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So if you deny, the, listen to this, if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. You cannot have, you cannot have fellowship with the Father. You cannot uh, be reconciled to the Father if you deny the Son. And so there's many people who are denying the Son. They're saying, you can get here this way. You can get here that way. They're saying this prophet can get you there. That prophet can get you there. And I, uh, uh, a while ago, I um, in in church and in uh, service uh, celebration time, uh, I had to I had to preach that Jesus is the only way because I had went to uh, perhaps you heard it, I had went to a, a memorial service, and uh, when I stood up and re made my remarks, <clears throat> I said that uh, Jesus was the way. I talked about the person. Uh, who was being memorialized and I said she believed in, in Christ I said and she's she's gone on to be with the Lord I said and uh, for us to see her again we need to know Jesus Christ I said because Jesus Christ is the one who makes us uh, able to have access to the Father I said basically those words and the person who got it behind me uh, made sure that they took a shot to discredit me they said it don't matter who it is. It don't matter if it's Buddha, if it's Muhammad, or whoever it is. We all got access our access to God. I heard exactly what they were saying. That was a shot at what I was saying. And I told the church that Sunday morning. That thing rang in my my rang so loud in my ears. I had got. I had to preach that that uh, Sunday morning. Jesus is the only way. He is the only way. They, you know, we talking about all uh, all of the ground is sinking sand. Everything else is false. Everything else is a lie. The conviction must be that is Jesus Christ. He is the one. He is the only one who reconciles us to God. John says the false teachers are denying Christ. John says that's that's a spirit of the Antichrist. And that thing just rang with me and rang with me. And now as we're going back through this and we're going through this now, I'm catching it more than th these, 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 these other uh, uh, denominations or religions that got, they got their prophets and say, they say their prophets are the way to God. And they're, they're, they're teaching that Jesus was a good man. He was a good man. He was a prophet, but he wasn't the Christ. They're teaching that you, you can get to God by your good works. You can get to God by this, that, the other. John said, no, that's a lie. Jesus, Jesus is the Christ. And you got to be steadfast in that. You got to be unmovable in that. You got to, you got to, you got to stand firm in that. There's no other way to God except by Jesus Christ. There's no other way. I don't care what the form and fashion is that they bring to you. Uh, I don't care how much they try to make it make sense to you. If it makes sense, that that's a, sometimes makes sense as a pride thing because you want to think that your intellect and your your thinking and you got it all together. See, it, it don't work that way with God. God uses the foolish things 
of the world to to complete his to complete his purpose. That's why the Bible says not many wise. Why? Because wise folk think they got it all figured out. And here's what happens. Yeah, but when somebody brings a lie, they they already done figured out how they gonna tell it to be convincing. Except for a little kid. Sometimes a little kid will be get caught on the spot and they just lie. And then you ask them, did you do this? They say no. They just say no. It just is natural. But there are lies that are fashioned listen to deceive their lives that are fashioned to be convincing and and there and what's said listen to this and how is said what's said and how it's said and so the false teachers uh they they come and they bring this lie that jesus is not the christ they bring this lie that he is not the one and they want to convince people and they will come to you and they will come to me with this with this lie, Jehovah Witnesses will knock on your door. And they knocking on your door with a different Jesus. The Mormons will knock on your door. And they will knock on your door with a different Jesus. There are there are social clubs. Can I call it that? I guess there are social clubs that talk about we we are Christians, but when you start looking at the workings of the club and you're looking at how things are going on, they got secret oaths you got to take and you got to go through all this and then you find out that they got an altar and anybody can bring their God to that altar and worship. And when you see all that, you understand that they're not they're not really Christian. They're just using that as a guise to get you in. They're teaching false stuff heresy jesus is the only one nobody else died for your sin nobody else gave his life for you say oh i gotta stop because i'm preaching nobody else gave his hand to the nails in his feet to the nail nobody else shed his blood on the cross for you only jesus did that that there's no other way to god but by jesus christ no other way and the false teachers peddle lies about who jesus is that's what they do. And you've got to be firm in it. I know I'm standing here a while, but somebody need to get this tonight. And you need to get this not only for yourself, but you need to share somebody, uh, share this with somebody else. The Bible says there's one, one God, one man, uh, one God, one man between God and man. And that's the one mediator. I'm sorry. There's one God and one mediator between man and God. That's the Lord, the Christ Jesus. Lord. He is the only one. Everything else is a lie. You can't get to God any other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. you got to go through Jesus Christ. So, But the false teachers, the false teachers say that Jesus is not the Christ. And that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the spirit that is here on earth, is rampant here on earth, and is trying to convince people that whatever is telling is the best way, and whatever is saying the best way, and John said that is a lie. It don't. It ain't like that. It's not like that. They are. They are lying. They are lying. That's why you have to be careful, because there's a lot of religions out there. They use the name Jesus, but they don't. They, they ain't doing. They're not doing Jesus Christ. It's a front. It's, it's, it's a fake to get you in. I think for you to, have to get you where they want you to be. It's a lie of the enemy. Let me just, John said, it's a, who, who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus Christ, it, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. So when, listen, so when they deny Jesus as the Christ, they deny the Father and the Son. Why? Because the Father and the Son, this is a package deal. Okay, it's a, pa it's a package deal. You can't get to the Father except by Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you can't get to the Father. So you've denied them both. You have denied them both both and i just i'm running i know it. second john 7 says many many deceivers many deceivers many many anti christ many liars are gone out into the world and here it is they do not confess jesus christ as coming in the flesh here it is john 1 and 1 y'all know it in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was God. Now, um, 
the Jehovah Witnesses in there, I think it's called the New World Translation, they changed that to say in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. That They changed it because they deny Christ as God. They deny Him as the Messiah. Okay, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In John 1 and 14, I'm talking about the Gospel now. It says, and the Word who was with God in the beginning, and who is God? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what the Word of God says. That's what it says, and that's what we stand on. The liar said, no, that ain't right. That, that the Jesus ain't it. It's got to be something else. It can't just be that way. No, he's the only one. He's the only one, y'all. He's the only one. He's the only one. I got to let me move on because I, I, I had to stay with that because uh, 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 the lie. See, 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 he, here's what happens with the devil. He'll fix that lie up so well that he will convince you, listen to this, that the lie is the truth. See, that, that's what he's after. He's after convincing you that his lie is the, is the truth. But you've got to know, you've got to know the truth of God's word. John says if they come with anything else, they're false teachers, they're, they're lying. Jesus is the only way to God. He is the Christ. He is the son of the living. He is the son of the living God. Let me just give you this. Let me, let me, let me just, just give you this. Um, first John 2, 24 through 27, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you alone. Let me, let me, uh, I'm just going to read it to you. Then I'm going to read it to you. Uh, don't let false teachings persuade you away from the truth. Here's the warning, 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 believer, warning. Don't let the false teachings, okay, persuade you away from the truth. Therefore, verse 24, therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. What's that? The truth. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised, eternal life. Eternal life, that truth that you got in you, who Jesus Christ is and who you made a confession of, guess what? That the promise is eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try. Here it is again. We all through the, who try to deceive you. They want to deceive you. They practice to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him, the Holy Spirit, abides in you, and you knew, you do not need anyone to teach you. But that same anointing teaches you concerning all things that are true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Let me give you a couple of things here. Um, uh, he says here, he says here that um, he says here uh, that we don't need anyone to teach us. Now, you got to understand the context. OK, what he's saying, he's not ruling out human teachers. You got to remember, he's teaching. That's what he's doing. He's teaching. But what he's aiming at is the Gnostics who wanted to be their teach the false teachers, the, the Antichrist who wanted to be their teachers. And listen, one of the issues that the Gnostics were teaching, you got to come to us because we we have a special higher knowledge that you don't have. Don't, don't miss that. This is why he says you don't need, you don't, see, you have to be careful who's whispering in your ear. Can we talk? You have to be careful where you're getting your information from. The Gnostics said we got special, higher knowledge that we, we possess. In other words, you need more than what the apostles have taught you. You need more than what, what you've been taught. We've got some stuff to supplement, Okay. To, to really help you, we've got some stuff. To, you know what a supplement is? A supplement, and many of you, us, we take vitamins or whatever. Supplements, you know, they are they, they they add to, okay? Supplements are supposed to be, make it better for you. But listen, the supplements that the, the Antichrist, these false teachings, false teachers were trying to get across to people, it wasn't making it better for them. It was, they were trying to lead people astray. So when he says you don't need to be taught, he's not talking about not being taught sound doctrine. He's talking about those who want to take you away from the word of God and teach you something that they know and claim is from God, but is not in the is not in the word of God. I hope you I hope you caught that there. 
okay, this higher knowledge stuff, okay? And don't forget this, it's the Spirit of God who really gives us the understanding of the truth. So even when I teach you again, it's the Spirit of God who illuminates the truth in you. It's the Spirit of God who brings those, remember I said earlier, those light bulb moments? The Spirit of God brings the light bulb moments, okay? And the idea is don't let false teachings persuade you away from the truth. You've got to know the truth. You've got to have the truth in you. Um, you've got to know the truth so you're not persuaded, if you would, away from the truth that you're not persuaded to follow the lie. You know, uh, they say that uh, in the treasury, the, the way they teach their uh, people who work in the treasury to recognize counterfeit money is not uh, spending a, a, a whole bunch of time with counterfeit money that they spend they spend time with the real money, the real deal, the legal money. They spend time looking at it and touching it and feeling it and notice how the grain flows, the grain of the paper flows and all this other stuff. They spend so much time with the real thing that when counterfeit money comes up, you know how you've seen, you've seen, uh, you've been in a store and a lot of times it were $20 bills. You get a clerk, a $20 bill in the store and they would take a marker and mark and look up. Okay, that's how they're trying to figure out if it's real or not. But with the agents, with the treasury agents, they know about the feel. They know about the touch. They can tell. You know why? Because they spend time with the real deal. You need to spend time in the word Bible study, praying, look at and get illumination from uh, uh, being taught the, taught the word of God from the word of God being illuminated by the Spirit of God. So when the false thing comes because you've got truth in you, you don't fall from the lie. This is not just showing up on Sunday morning. This is not just showing up on Wednesday evenings or whatever Bible study time might be. But you need to have that word in you. Remember, uh, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law meditates day and night. You got to get some word in you. I tell our, our men all the time, you got to get some word in you. That the word helps you through life. And you need the truth of God's word. Listen to this. So when the lie comes along, you can recognize that that lie is not the truth. Because if you don't, if you don't, you could spend time in the church, you could spend time, whatever. But if you don't get that truth in you and live that truth, the lie will come and it will suck you away. It will suck you away. Uh, you know, I know people who have spent time in the church house, been around the church house Sunday morning, been around the church house as Bible study, and can't find them no more. And what have they done? They've got sucked away by the lie. They've got sucked away by the knock on the door. You know why? Because they really didn't get it in them. Since they really didn't get it in them, when that lie is presented to them, that lie makes sense. See, a lie can make sense if it's if it's uh, presented the right way. And there have been people, you know people, I know people, who have been sucked away by the lie, not because they didn't have exposure to the truth, but they didn't get the truth in them. They didn't get the truth in them so it could fortify them. So when the lie comes and it makes sense to them, they go, they go, they go with the lie. Many cults, many cults have, have found a fertile, fertile, um, 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 fertile ground in those who, who are not living, walking in the word of God. They found it. They people come out of church. They've gotten people out of churches, churches, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, whatever you want to call them. They, they got them out of there and they got them into a cult because the people, they were there. Listen, I like to say it this way. They were in the church house, but the church wasn't in them. The truth has to be absorbed. The truth has to be uh, uh, lived out. It has to be believed and you have to stand on it. You got to know it. So when the lie comes, you say, wait a minute. That don't sound right. And the Holy Spirit says, no, that's not right. You, you got to have that. You got to have that. Because if not, you can fall for the lie. And John, in this writing, what we have here is saying they are false teachers. They're those who will come against Jesus Christ and they'll deny who he is. And if you are not solid in knowing who he is, you will believe the lie. You believe the lie. 
So be warned, be warned, get the word. These times we're spending on Wednesday nights, get this word. And I'm not claiming to be the only one teaching the word, but you need the word taught. You need you need to be taught the word of God. You need to be taking it in. You need to get you need your word intake to fortify you against a lie. And, and lie here, the lie here that he's concerned about is Jesus is not the Christ. That's the lie. He's not the Savior. They, 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 then they, put to, they want to come in with all kinds of other ways you can get to God. And if John says that's a lie, you, you got to know. You got to know the lie from the truth. You got to know. You got to know it. It's important for you not to be pulled away by the lie. There are false teachers. There will be false teachers. Until Jesus comes back, the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is, is, is a run across our nation, run across our nation. People leaving churches because they had their spirit of the Antichrist has come in and spoken a lie, spoken a lie. And it can be, it can be very uh, 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 heartbreaking sometimes to hear people are leaving, going after that stuff, you know, because you know they've heard the truth, but they have not received the truth. And when the lie comes up, they run after that lie. Stand on the truth of who Jesus Christ is. That's what this whole passage is about. Stand on the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And when anything else comes up, you got to reject it. Don't play with it. Don't sit down and talk about, well, I want to show you a different way. No, I, I know the way Jesus Christ says he is the way. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that way. Jesus Christ is the way. You got to be firm in that. You got to be so firm in that that when they come and want to tell you about another way, you tell them, let me tell you about my way. <laughs> let me tell you about the way I've learned. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way. He's the only way. He is the only way. All this other stuff. And we don't need to supplement anything with him. He is the propitiation. The propitiation. God is satisfied with what Jesus did. We don't need nothing else. I don't need no higher knowledge that you claimed you got from somewhere. I depend on the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, what I'm being taught from the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to help me in this life. That's what you got to hold on to. You got to recognize the truth from the lie. Bow with me if you would. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Uh, this, the lie is out there. It's being told over and over again. And so there's confusion. There's there's a lack of understanding because when we don't have the truth, we can believe the lie. But I pray, God, for uh, your people that we will be more uh, determined to live your word, more to understand your word, God. And most of all, help us to stand on this truth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of you, the living God. He is the only one. He is the only one that gives us access to you. And we thank you for that tonight. His death on the cross. We thank you for the shedding of his blood that we, be, we would be made right with you. We thank you, God, that we have ex access to you now because of your son. We praise you and we bless you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Remember, Jesus is the one uh, there is no other. Uh, people are talking about another one, but Jesus Christ is the only one. Stand in and stand on the truth of God's word.